Good evening, everyone. It is 6 p.m., so I'm going to call this uh, City Council meeting to order. Um, it is September 14th, and um, if you will all stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance with me. Hey, Glenn. How are you doing? I get my business done. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you. Um, we will do roll. And as I recall, going back over my notes, um, Councilwoman Kesty requested that she be excused for this uh, meeting. So. Um, we have her excused, um, and I'll just go down the line. So, Councilman Owen? Yeah. Thank you. I just need you to say it for the record is all. <laughs> Councilman McGoffin? Present. Thank you. Councilwoman uh, Diamond? Present. Thank you. Councilman Burns? Present. Councilman Allen? Present. Thank you. Councilman Lavaca? Present. Thank you. Okay. I'm looking for an approval of the agenda, but before we do, um, we would like to pull item, um, it's the first unfinished business. It's item um, 2022 comp plan um, off your agenda tonight. There's some housekeeping items that we need to take care of before we present it to you. So um, whoever makes the approval, if you could include that, pulling the comp item off the item, uh, off the, <laughs> Off the agenda would be great. Boy, that was really clear, wasn't it? Off the docket. Madam Mayor, I approve the agenda of removing item one of the uh, unfinished business. All right, thank you. Second. Thank you. All right, so we had a motion by Councilman Lavaca, second by Councilman Owen, um, with uh, stipulating that the 2022 Comprehensive Plan docket amendment um, will be pulled from this particular agenda, and it will come back to you on the 28th. Um, any discussion or questions or concerns? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Looking for a motion for the consent agenda, items one through three. I'll make that motion, Madam Mayor. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you. So I have a motion by Councilman Burns, second by Councilman McGoffin. Any questions or comments? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, there is no special guest tonight, so we will move right into the city administrator's report. No report this evening, Mayor. All right, thank you. Going down the line then, Councilman uh, Owen, any? I have nothing, Madam Mayor. All right, Councilman McGoffin. Uh, just one item this evening. Um, there's a big construction project starting in Ward 1, so if you're going down FNS, um, the new development is starting to go in, so just be mindful of new trucks and traffic. All right, thank you. Councilwoman Diamond? Uh, nothing tonight, thank you. Thank you. Councilman Burns? Nothing tonight, Madam Mayor. All right, thank you. Councilman Allen? Yeah, Madam Mayor, I'd like to give two call-outs to Serena in your office and Jeff Moody out at the cemetery for making uh, really some nice hum humane gestures towards myself and my cousin. Oh, very nice. Thank you for sharing that. All right, thank you. And Councilman Lavaca? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, there was uh, just two things, uh, maybe three. There was um, somebody had mentioned the, the over at Hell's where we have the burger stand, which is really awesome. The traffic that goes up to line that up can be pretty uh, intense sometimes, especially during festivals. And they were wondering if there's anything the city can do or does to help uh, inform them that, they, that people can't just block traffic as they're waiting to get served. Mm -hmm. I said I'll bring it up and, and mention it. Um, the thing is, is that with the businesses, I have been going out and started to get with them. But yes, uh, last week around Monday, I wasn't feeling good. So I decided mm -hmm. just to hold back um, and, and not go forward with that. So, uh, but I have gotten some good feedback, some good information. I'll get with Brendan and, and relay that to you. And then we'll see. Yeah, about I saw the email. That. It was very good. I appreciate the fact that you guys went out and made those connections. But I, so, um, are you asking a question of the chief or, or regarding? Uh, if the chief, yeah. Do you know anything about that or have you heard, has anybody complained about that before? 
I think I've just uh, seen the email you got before. Yes, we have had some of those complaints before. Um, can't recall when, but a while ago. Yeah, it does back up there. And and I know um, the employees from Howell's Drive-In, I've been in there, and they've, uh, along the side of the uh, road sidewalk, I know they've come to the passenger side. I haven't seen them from the driver's side. I'm not sure. Uh, it does seem like it does block the road. I haven't been personally impeded by it, but I did mention that I would men mention uh, if we were blocking the road, probably not a great idea. Yeah, your lunch time hours, uh, yeah, probably busy, right? Um, I, I would say best best bet is just talk to them, and they'll probably resolve it. All right, thank you. Anything else? I do, or? Any anything else? I, I can make a request. Yes, I can. Yeah, I, I can contact them. Sorry, uh, turn that off. I can stop by and, and speak and just chat with the owner and see if there's anything we can do to to spearhead that. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, Thanks. but yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I just have a couple things. So um, at our 911 board meeting today, something was brought up that I know that uh, they would like information disseminated. Maybe you can actually share this with your um, constituents um, at any point if you talk to them. But there are times that people uh, dial 911 by mistake. And when they do that, they hang up. Well, the 911 staff does have to call them back. So they would prefer that if you call 911 by mistake, hang up, hang on. Hang, in, hang on the line so that when they answer, you can say, uh, I dialed by mistake. They'd appreciate that. It would expedite time and it'd make it easier on an already overworked staff there. So the other thing that I want to bring up is um, the Skagit County, um, we're preparing for a possible temporary solid waste facility closure. And this is due to the railroad strike that um, may be looming. Um, um, Margot Gillespie, who is our Solid Waste Division Manager, said that um, we've been experiencing a lot of disruptions on the rail service and container shortages since January of 2022, and I think we're all aware of this. Uh, Skagit County is working with neighboring cities and with the railroad itself to try to resolve this issue, just to make you aware. And um, there is a possible nationwide strike that could affect more than 100,000 railway workers. So um, just something else that will probably create more shortages, but um, I, maybe you've already heard this on the news, but if you have not, um, just to be aware, it's something that I think we're going to have to deal with, not just as a community, but also um, as a county and a nation. All right, moving on. We will go on to, uh, let's see here. Oh, there was a proclamation. Let me read the proclamation and we'll move on to our business. So this is a proclamation of the city of Cedar Woolley on September 14th, 2022. Puget Sound starts here month in Cedar Woolley, Washington. Whereas we resolve to protect Puget Sound and its tri tributaries, which are a source of our community's well-being, health, economy, and quality of life, and whereas we acknowledge that we are on land of the coast Sahelish and we are stewards of this land for time immoral, whereas the health of Puget Sound is declining, the creatures of plants great and small from our bull kelp forests and salmon to our orcas, shellfish and creatures are at risk from the human impacts of stormwater runoff, loss of natural habitats and the changing climate and whereas all have the power to protect our Puget Sound treasure, work together to discover and take clean water actions through the Puget Sound Starts Here campaign. And whereas in the month of September, the city of Cedar Woolley will join with other governing bodies, organizations, community groups to strengthen the stewardship of our shared watershed and encourage all to take action and improve the health of Puget Sound. I now, therefore, Julia Johnson, Mayor of Cedar Woolley, do hereby proclaim the month of September 2022, Puget Sound Starts Here Month in Cedar Woolley. I urge residents to support clean water and healthy habitat by joining me in the special observance and discover how to make a difference as part of the solution. This is dated September 14th, 2022. And I thank uh, Puget Sound Energy for sending this to us and making us aware of this. And I know that you're all very conscientious of our environment and want to see it taken care of. So that is the proclamation for this month. Moving on to public comment. Um, do we have anybody on the line for public comment? It is 610. If we do, please give your name, your address, and try to keep it to three minutes. I don't know, Bill, is there anybody there on, on the line that maybe I'm not seeing on my screen? 
no one is uh, um, that I see. All right, thank you. All right, here in the chamber, is there anybody who would like to make public comment? Name, address, and keep it to three minutes. Thank you. My name is Philip Murray. I live at 101 West Woodworth. Um, you folks are going to go into the uh, office over there and have an executive session to buy some. Uh, the microphone's not on. Not my deal. <laughs> um, you're going to go in there and have an executive session to buy property. Well, nobody knows what this property is, so I'm telling you, don't buy it. You did this once, and I, you came out, and you bought the iron skillet property. You would have had hundreds and hundreds of people saying, don't do that, if they had known about it. It needs to be open to all the people what you're buying. It, it's just ridiculous. You can just do it, and then what's the consequences? What's the neighbor? What happens to the neighboring people and stuff? You need to redo that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody else? All right, seeing none, it is 6.11, and I'll close public comment. We will move right into unfinished business. Item 1 has been pulled from the agenda. So item 2, the City Council Strategic Goals. And Mr. Bush, I believe this is yours. Thank you, Mayor Johnson and Council. We've had a lot of discussion on this topic, so uh, really at this point on the second read, uh, just looking for um, any further questions from Council, and uh, if there's a motion uh, to approve the Council Strategic Goals, which is the first detachment there, that would be fantastic. Are there any questions for Mr. Bush? Okay, hearing or seeing none, do we have a motion? I'll put a motion forward to approve the strategic goals. Thank you. I'll second. All right, thank you. So we have a motion by Councilman Lavaca, seconded by Councilman McGoffin, um, to uh, move ahead with the staff recommendations to approve the City Council strategic goals. Any more discussion or any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <clears throat> Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries. Moving on to new business, and this is um, a first read, so no action is required, and it is Ordinance 2019-22, the Union Cemetery Municipal Code Update. And I believe, Mr. Freiberger, are you going to do this one? It's, it's, uh, it says it's from Nathan's Public Works, so I'm not sure. Yes. Um, <clears throat> So I've reviewed the, the change of proposed. They were prepared by um, Nathan Salsina and um, with Nikki Thompson's assistance or uh, review. And Nikki can probably speak better to any details on, uh, on that than I can. Uh, but basically it's a, it's a major revamping of the ordinance relating to um, solid waste and, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, cemetery. And um, it... Uh, uh, that's about all I, I can say about it, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, Ms. Thompson, do you have anything you want to add to this? Madam so Mayor. I'm happy to take any questions that, that people may have. Um, otherwise, it is a complete rewrite of the cemetery code that we hope modernizes um, the processes and the definitions and um, puts in place something that is more user-friendly. All right, thank you. Are there questions? Yes, Councilman uh, Allen. Yeah, Madam Mayor, this is uh, kind of hitting near and dear to me, so I perused it very carefully, and it just makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. to update everything. Uh, I don't know what codifies means, but uh, mm -hmm. other than probably to meet city codes, but... Uh, I, I read it very carefully, and I never found anything onerous in the... Okay. In the All right, thank you. Is there anybody else? Um, I, I just have a question. So I notice under... Um, it's actually on page 262, or 262, it's item 280.020, the um, admission to cemetery. And at one point, it says, number one, children are not permitted on the premises unless they're accompanied by an adult or supervised. And I think it might be beneficial if we specify age, um, because I think people might be confused. Do we consider 12-year-olds okay to be there on their own, or do they need to be supervised? I'm just wondering if we could specify an age. 
Certainly. Um, typically, I would assume that, that a, a child is anyone under the age of 18, um, but I'm happy to put an actual age in there um, at whatever age you, you would suggest. I don't know if that's important to the council or not. Um, you know, if so, I think Nikki would appreciate your input. But it was just something that, as I read through it, it was a question that popped into my head. What, what, what defines a child? Is it age eight, age twelve, age fifteen? I, Madam Mayor, if I may, I would uh, suggest twelve or younger. You know, I can see children going in there to visit a, a parent or a lost loved one, a grandparent, or something like that. I don't think that we should should stop that you know i mean you're going to find older people or younger people in there possibly vandalizing or doing things they should do all the same but we shouldn't restrict people from being able to we're mainly looking at like should kids be in a cemetery by themselves at that old okay i don't know i was actually i lived across the street from or right behind a cemetery so i would go out and play in it at like nine years old or whatnot but <laughs> okay all right thank you anyone else Councilman Diamond? I would agree with um, Councilman Lavaca in that um, I think that most people that are going to go to the cemetery are going to, res to um, pay respects to a loved one. And um, I don't think that we should um, discriminate by um, anybody that is would be responsible enough to be able to walk there and, and go visit and to do that. 16-year-olds um, can drive and, and may take siblings and go pay their respects there as well. So um, I would agree it's at starting with if we're putting an age on it, uh, 12 and under. Okay, thank you. Is that, go ahead, Councilman Burns. I'll agree with both of them. I think that's a good age. Okay. Anybody, yes, okay. I'm getting a thumbs up. How about you, Councilman Allen? Huh? 12, 12 or under would define a child? We can amend it to that, yes. Okay. So. All right, so um, I have um, six head nods here. Nikki, is that possible just to make that definition, define what, it, what that would be? Yes, absolutely. I'll just add the words 12 and under, okay. children 12 and under. Okay. Hey, Thank Nikki, you. I have a quick question too. Um, sure. What happens if someone, you know, 12 years old gets injured or hurt on the property alone? Like from so a that's a very, a very fair question. Um, typically, unless the city has uh, done something or left something that is obvious, um, it, it should have immunity in that situation. Um, and again, you know, it, it's sort of assumed that um, that children under the age of eighteen are under the control of their parents and are and are only doing things that they're allowed to do or given permission to do. Not that I actually. Um, think that that's reality, but that's what's assumed. Um, so theoretically, the city should have significant immunity unless there is um, some sort of latent defect or um, hazard that the city is aware of. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, if not, thank you, Nikki, for making those changes. And um, I'm, sh I'm assuming this will come back to us on the 28th, correct? Yes. All right. Okay, moving on to um, item number two, the renewal of interlocal agreement with Skagit County and Community Court. This is a first read. No action is required. We did hear from um, Community Court at our last council meeting, at the strategic work meeting. Um, Mr. Bush, are you going to take this one? Absolutely. And yeah, the, this item and the next item on the agenda were presented together at the work session last week. Uh, and we had uh, resources here from both the county and from our municipal court, uh, both the judges. Um, this particular item for community court uh, really doubles the number of dockets uh, on a monthly basis, slightly raises the, uh, the fee for those dockets. And uh, I'm not a subject matter expert, certainly in community court, but I'm happy to run down any further questions the council may have and, and can talk about the fiscal impact from the city's perspective. Okay. Thank did you. Um, I did have a question, if that's all right, Madam Mayor. I don't, uh, last week, my hand uh, didn't didn't get picked on, but it was one of the things of how many are we seeing each each month that are actually, or e even throughout uh, on an annual basis, that are getting reformed. Um, you know, even one is really good, to tell you the truth, but just to get a number on seeing how many people have, have actually turned around and don't go forward into the actual system. Okay. We'll see what we can run down on that. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. All right. Do you just want to jump into the next one as well? 
Absolutely, I can do that. So the next one, similarly, is a renewal of an interlocal agreement with the county, and this one is for probation services. And you may recall that this, uh, the rate for probation, probation services doubled. Uh, and the reason for that that was mentioned by Judge Halson is that the rates hadn't changed in many, many years. Um, and so this is a necessary service for the city. We don't, we don't have a, a tremendous load of, pro, of uh, probationary uh, clientele, um, so it would not make sense necessarily to provide the service in another way. So we're recommending uh, approval, but right now, just looking to take any questions the council may have. We can get more information for you on this as well. All right, any questions regarding the probation fees? Okay, hearing none, this will come back on the 28th. Thank you. Next item on the docket is uh, Ordinance 2020-22, amending the Sejuwili Municipal Code 1044-020 to remove certain parking restrictions on Nelson Street. Mr. Freiberger. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> this is actually a request of the Sejuwili School District. Uh, some years back, they had requested that re uh, parking be restricted uh, along the uh, north side of their property, um, above where the gymnasium is on Nelson Street. Um, they found with the number of students driving to a school on a daily basis, they're just out of space. They've got problems with parking in uh, private uh, or areas uh, abutting neighboring properties. Um, and so they're just looking to develop or have the ability to park more students in the vicinity of the school. And quite frankly, uh, it's not something we've been forced. So they've been parking there anyway. So that's what the uh, background for this is. It's just to reverse what the district had uh, had uh, requested before. For us, it's a simple matter of removing two or three signs, and and um, business will just go on as usual. Okay. Any questions? All right. Um, no action required tonight. That's what I see on the. Uh... Right. First read. Okay. All right, perfect, thank you. All right, that concludes our new business. We will now move into executive um, session. Executive session is to discuss potential litigation pursuant to RCW 4230-110-LI, 1I, and the acquisition of real estate pursuant to RCW 4230-1101B, where public knowledge could cause increase in price, action may be taken following the executive session. And as I understand it, 15 minutes um, is what we're hoping will be adequate for this. So um, we will now move into executive session. Thank you. We're leaving our stuff here. Not yet. This is closed session. I'm sorry, this is exact session. The next one is closed session after adjournment. <laughs> Believe it or not, it matters. Why the state calls it things that seem very similar, I don't know. I appreciate that. doesn't strike every night.
you know, after starting out. So, I mean, I wrote, I wrote the Mariners off after two months. Like, there we go. Look at him. And then they have turned into like, well, the best team in baseball since then. Yeah, I kind of I kind of jumped back and watched one in one of the 14 in a row or 15 in a row. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've got something going on here. And because they, they were back, and then it's like they're still back, but they. No, I yeah, like a ninety-seven percent chance of making the playoffs. Oh, yeah, we'll count your age yet. Oh, sounds like a jaded Mariners fan. Well, <laughs> I've been there before. And I've plenty of time on the so close. You know, it's the most disappointing. One. Gosh, it's been it's been several years now. Two thousand seventeen, maybe. Um, they were right on the cusp. They, they might have been a little early, a couple of years earlier. They had a surprise, surprisingly good season, and they went to um, they went to Toronto. And Toronto, I don't even think was a playoff team, or maybe they were maybe they were fighting for the playoffs too. And Felix was on the mound, and he gave up eight runs in the first inning. My income was Social what the and it just go and it just kind of made me think, huh? Maybe he wouldn't be any good in the playoffs because you know that's a play that's a playoff type situation and for him to just come out shit bad. I'm trying to remember plenty of times where it's like, oh, it's August. Hey, they're pretty close. We all jump on board and start to out. Okay, it's been 20 years. The added. Yeah, if this was the 90s, they'd be out of luck. Well, this is the first year they've had three wild card spots. Really? Well, right now they're in line for the first. Well, it's the second year that they've had three. Didn't they have three or five last year? I think they've had five last year. Yeah, that was the last year. And they still didn't. So the three, so now they have six teams that are going in. They used to have it. I think the wild card used to be the number one team gets a bye. Oh, so is it is it going to be again this year? This year nobody gets fired. So this year. So the, the the last two in don't have to play a one game playoff. Uh, oh yeah, I got you right. And have you gone to? Um, it's a one game playoff. That's the way it's been. They changed the rules over here. And you know, they're, they're not going to... Big, big bags. They're not going to allow the shift. Yeah, that's going to be hard for a lot of teams. Like, this could be more offense. That's the idea. Yeah. Because the shift actually works quite a bit. Oh, yeah. Well, half the Mariners get shifted on. Uh, probably yeah. half of every team, to be honest. Yeah, really, all teams like that. And a grilled cheese sandwich once a day is not going to cut it. So there'll be a pitch timer, pitch clock. Jeff Passens this morning said, uh, he was asked, like, I, was, the radio guy said, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not so sure about this pitch clock thing. I don't know much of it. Um, I, I kind of like the, the tension of the in-between pitches. And he's, and he's asked him if he agrees, and he's like, watch a minor league game. You'll you'll be sold after 20 minutes. So much better so with the pitch clock. The wild card is, is so we're, 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 yeah, so last year we only had two wild cards. There was only two? So but there was a one game playoff. I mean, they played each other and then they played the division leader. Right. The winner played division leader. And the best best record of the division leader plays four seasons. Oh, so what are we doing? So this year it's three. So, yeah, you'll have three division leaders. We'll then play the three wild card teams. Full wild card team. Well, 
So there's no one game playoffs. Looks younger. That's correct. We'll receive a buy. Top two get a buy. So at, the, at this point, it's the Yankees and the Astros. My great friends are going to be here normally. That's a full series. Wow. How long, is, how long are the playoffs going to go to November now? I guess they're already going to November. We're going to go to Thanksgiving. Well, you know, that was the fastest city council meeting since Mike set the record back eight years ago. So I'm going to take it. We're going to go. Are leaving? Yeah. How about the other block card? What? Fun. I can see it. This is if, if you try and you know, I guess why not? Like, make it a thing. You know, whenever when the World Series is over, I kind of I kind of go like, why do you know what's going on? Yes, I can listen to what you see. Your work, right? Right. Doing stuff in the garage or whatever, and uh, when it's done, they go do the project like that. Texan, like, you know, only two weeks to catchers and catchers report. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I don't know, the parents make it over to Washington. Six, ten, 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 
friend they did one of these where they bought property because they owned skillet property. Nobody, nobody knew it. Everybody's upset. Yeah, well. They need to, they need to have um, open government. I, I, I don't get to make that decision. Yeah, I don't. I'll, I'll pass the buck there. Tony, how you doing? I'm Tony. Charlie Bush asked that I announce executive session will last another five minutes. Thank you.
Is that Tony out there? I didn't recognize you without a smile on your face, Tony. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'll turn the tablet in here. And whatever else. Usually stuff just accumulates because it's just a big bag. Yeah. Stuff's in the bottom that I find, you know, after a few minutes. And I'm like, oh, that's where that went. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Okay. All right, it is 644 and we are back in session. And um, we did discuss two different items and um, our attorney, Nikki Thompson, will read the first motion. Thank you, Mayor. So the first motion that I would ask for is I move to authorize the mayor to sign a formal offer letter, including eminent domain language for 603 FNS grade with a purchase price of $495,000. Madam Mayor, mm -hmm. can I make that motion? Yes. Okay, it's made. <laughs> okay. I'll second. All right, so we have a motion by Councilman Allen, a second by Councilman, uh, Lev or Councilman McGoffin. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, and we also discussed um, litigation, and I believe, Councilman Burns, you're making a motion. Uh, I'm making a motion to authorize the attorney to issue a warrant of abatement for 202 Reed Street. All right. Madam Mayor, I'll second that. All right. Thank you. So we have a motion by Councilman Burns, seconded by Councilman Allen um, to move forward with the litigation. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries. So that is it for our, our meeting tonight. And um, Council, we do have... Um, um, a closed session that we're going to be moving into after I adjourn. If there is anything for the good of the order, 
All right. So we are adjourned.